So from a dynasty football and fantasy football perspective, how does it benefit these targets? Because Russell Wilson's always been a guy that spreads the ball around a lot. And the Seahawks, I've always been one that's been reluctant to draft their fantasy players outside of Marshawn Lynch because they're so streaky, too. Are you worried about that kind of thing with the Broncos? No, not really. I mean... It's it's going to be hard pressed to say that you can create the type of playmakers that a DK Metcalf and a Tyler Lockett were. But when we look at just even their volume metrics, I mean, DK Metcalf last year had 129 targets, Tyler Lockett 107. And if you look, if you kind of compare Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton to that, they might not be that same duo. But there's enough of Russell Wilson to go around for both of those guys, and both of those guys are extreme playmakers in in their own way. So I think that you know he can support you know two two top 15 essentially wide receivers. So I don't see that necessarily changing. I think it's going to be with, um, I think it's going to be kind of a, a different feel. I'm not sure how that offense is going to look this year, but Russell Wilson being Russell Wilson is a really, really good sign for that wide receiver core from a dynasty perspective. I'm not going out and trading for Russell Wilson right now. I mean, he's what 37. If I remember correctly, I mean, he's, he's 33 right now. I'm, I don't think I'm going out looking to trade for him, but his offensive pieces that are are definitely guys that I'm intrigued by, especially Jerry Judy, because I think you can get him for a pretty, I mean, right now the hype is, is really hot for him right now, but I I really think you can go out and get him for a good deal. Um, Cortland Sutton as well. And, you know, Javante Williams is virtually untouchable right now in in, in all your dynasty leagues. He's going to cost you a fortune, but for the overall offense, I I really think that it's going to be a really, a really big impact uh, in, in fantasy terms. The 49ers uh, went all the way to the NFC title game last year. I'm not a big Kyle Shanahan fan, as everybody knows on this show. Uh, but he's got a lot of weapons defensively. His offensive game, they, they, they have a three-headed monster over there. They weren't 100% healthy last year. Their offensive line was fantastic. Uh, they lose Tomlinson. He goes to the Jets. So it definitely hurts uh, their offense uh, going into the offseason. But all in all, this team is very well built together. Jimmy Garoppolo is still there. I'm very surprised because at the end of the season, after the playoffs, he was saying his goodbyes and he was saying that he wants to go to a team that's a contender. He's still there with the 49ers. I would expect him to obviously eventually give his, you know, his quarterback play to the new rookie, the, the player that they traded for, gave up a significant amount of picks back for in Trey Lance. Where do you see this team going in, going into the new season in 2022-2023? Yeah, it's going to be interesting because from everything that we heard in the offseason was that, you know, the 49ers were going to ship Jimmy Garoppolo out, right? I believe this is, his, he's, this is his last year of his contract, if I remember correctly. One thing I will say, though, is... Kyle Shanahan is a quarterback who can kind of scheme around any and everybody. You've seen it. He's He made Debo Samuel an absolute monster at, at almost every position this year. Elijah Mitchell coming out as well. I mean, he was a late round draft pick, but almost any running back that goes to that system is just, if they get the volume, I mean, they're really, really good. I do hope that Elijah Mitchell sticks, but what's kind of intriguing about the Jimmy G situation is he knows Shanahan's expectations. He knows that scheme and he's executed it to a very high level. Now he's not the best quarterback in the game, but he is a guy that can get you to that NFC championship. So I really, really think that the 49ers kind of dug themselves in a little bit of a hole with trading up to get Trey Lance. I like Trey Lance, but it's apparent. I mean, Jimmy G was banged up towards the end of the season. He had the thumb issue as well, and he still came out and play. They were willing to play Jimmy G at 75% over letting their young rookie quarterback, who's just kind of a gunslinger, who can get off platform, who can run around, has a lot of rushing ability, who's supposed to be the guy. They were more comfortable rolling with Jimmy in that situation at 75% than they were letting Trey Lance kind of have the reins. I think that's very telling. I think that's an interesting situation that we're going to monitor. If Jimmy does stick in in San Francisco for another year, I I fully expect him to be the starter. So Debo Samuel is somebody that, because he was a top five finish for fantasy and a great receiver all around this year, is somebody that could be an influencer on the rest of the game. We're seeing a lot more of the hybrid players now with these wide receivers. A lot of wide receivers that have drafted recently, guys like LaVisca Chenault and Elijah Moore, they were saying one of their traits is they could run out of the backfield too and stuff like that too. So can you see that kind of thing being the norm? And also, how do you take that kind of approach from a fantasy perspective? Well, I mean, those guys are probably as valuable as it's going to get, right? I mean, those guys can do it all. They can get you points from any perspective of the game. And generally, they're the ones that are on the field, especially a guy like Debo Samuel, when you saw them get into, um, you know, some jet sweeps or even just straight up out of the backfield, you saw him being the guy that was going to touch that football even out of the backfield. They manufactured targets for him from a routes perspective. They pretty much got him involved at any way in any way that they could. So 
fantasy goldmine right there. I don't know if it's going to be a regularity. I think that there's a certain skill set and scheme that really, really goes into those those types of players. I mean, you look at another one like Cordell Patterson, right? He was somebody who really shined this year with Atlanta, and he was somebody that the Vikings drafted to kind of replace Percy Harvin in that role, right? Was somebody that could take it out of the backfield that's just a home run hitter. It's hard to replicate. It's hard to, to, to get a player that can do that and be just almost an every down weapon. There are a couple players that are coming up in this year's draft. I know Traylon Burks is somebody that's like that. He is going to be somebody that I think the team that decides to grab him could be in a really, really good position to get you know, a a guy that can do it all like that. I don't know if it's easy to replicate that right there. You have to have a really special player, but I would assume that more teams see, see Debo and they want to try it, right? You want to give those opportunities to a guy that who's big athletic like that, who's big when he's playing, right? Cause Debo, he's not the biggest guy, but he plays big. He's, he's strong. He's powerful. He's fast. He's a really, really good blended athlete. Teams would be really wise to, to try and bite on some of that athleticism in the draft and see if they can kind of manufacture that too. Jesse, there are three teams left that I really want to look at. One of them are the LA Rams today. They re- they signed Allen Robinson. They're still looking to sign Odell Beckham. They have Woods coming back this off after the offseason tearing his Achilles or his uh, ACL, and, and they still have Cooper Cup. Then you have Jacksonville. Who knows what they're doing? They overpay Christian Kirk, I mean, he's he's one of the highest paid wide receivers in the league, and he's really a third option from the Arizona Cardinals. Good player, but not great, and he got a lot of money, and, and some of the moves they made are kind of like head-scratching. And then Von Miller getting the $120 million contract by Buffalo. What the hell they're doing? What they're doing, they give up all these old players, they drop Hughes, they drop all these old linemen, and they bring in another old guy, 33 years old, and they're overpaying him. So what are they doing? Yeah, the Bills, I'm not sure. I think Von Miller is one of those players... I think he was going to command that type of contract. And I think that coming off of a Super Bowl, you want to pay for a little bit of that experience, right? Can he replicate that and get the Bills past the Chiefs in the playoffs? Can he do what he did for the Rams or the Bills? I think he can for maybe a year or two, right? Not five years. I don't know if he's got five years left in him. But listen, I've been proven wrong more times than I can count in my head. So maybe he does have it. But you overpay for a commodity like that that you think can bring you over the edge. So as much as I don't like it necessarily, I understand kind of what they're trying to do in Buffalo. The past couple of years, they just have not been able to get past the Chiefs. They have not been able to solidify that spot in the Super Bowl for the AFC. So they're swinging for the fences right now. And you kind of have to with the way the AFC is rolling out right now. The AFC is like the West in uh, in the NBA, right? It's just it's just stacked. It's a powerhouse. From the Rams right now, they just signed Allen Robinson. Crazy. I'm very, very, very excited about that because Allen Robinson has had to deal with a just a carousel of mediocre quarterback play. I'm excited to see him come in as a receiver and a player. He's not too long in the tooth. I think they're, he's, they're probably giving him a, a little bit more than over market price for him, but he is a really, really good wide receiver coming off a really, really down year. But Matthew Stafford had, I believe, if we're looking at attempts wise in that offense, he's had a, about the fourth or fifth most attempts. That offense is throwing. And they're going to be able to support all three of those wide receivers. Now, it looks like the odd man out might be Odell Beckham. I know that the reports are that they want to get him back. But Robert Woods is is kind of a stalwart in that offense. He's been there for years. He's kind of the guy that's been that that just one stable piece, especially after the rise of Cooper Cup. He kind of fell by the wayside a little bit, but I would expect the Rams to kind of stick with Robert Woods before Odell Beckham. Granted, Odell Beckham really had a good end of his season last year, especially after getting traded there in the playoffs, Super Bowl as well. So that's an interesting situation to monitor, but from a Matthew Stafford perspective, what more can you ask for a guy like that, right? What what more weapons can you ask to give him he's going to be another quarterback that's going to be top seven top six in 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 fantasy football next year as well the jacksonville jaguars they're kind of burning money on these wide receivers you know zay jones christian kirk not horrible wide receivers but not great ones right like for the price that they got christian kirk for you would imagine that they would be able to go and grab Maybe an Odell Beckham and and then maybe an Allen Robinson, right? Maybe you how bring about, him back. How about re-signing Miles Jack and not letting right. him go to Pittsburgh? Like a bunch right. of exactly. that they are. I'm more so talking from even just like an offensive perspective. It's like you there's so many different ways they could have allocated that money, right? Defensively as well with Miles Jack. But in my opinion, you're you're signing you signed Christian Kirk to just this absolutely massive deal. And at best, he was a wide receiver too in Arizona. 
I don't think he's going to come on super strong. I mean, maybe they manufacture him a lot of volume in that offense and he becomes, I mean, he was kind of fantasy relevant throughout last year. He wasn't horrible, but just not the type of guy that you throw that type of contract to, right? I think they're trying to get Trevor Lawrence as many weapons as possible, I think, which is a good sign. You want to get your, you know, your sophomore quarterback as many weapons as possible, but they're just not doing it in the right way. So I'm interested to see where, where that's going to roll out, especially from a fantasy perspective. You got Travis Etienne that's going to be coming off of um, an, a, an injury missed all of last year. I think he's going to be an amazing running back. He's going very high in, in startup drafts as well. I think he's going to have a good year and, and hopefully Trevor Lawrence can kind of take that next step. I mean, we're talking about a guy that was the most prolific college quarterback over the last decade, he was supposed to be the guy. And we didn't really see that last year. It, we saw it in spurts, but it's going to be interesting to see the way that that pans out. I just don't think Jacksonville did enough to really compliment him. Dynasty leagues, dynasty football, one player to buy right now, one player to sell. Who would it be and why? Okay, my oh, my player to buy right now is Kadarius Tony. Okay, so right now I love Kadarius Tony from an analytical standpoint. He did not have a whole lot to say last year because he had a lot of injuries. He was kind of banged up, but... I really, really like what he did show. Now, he on limited volume, he showed a lot of efficiency. When the ball was in his hand, he was making plays. He had that one huge game last year. He really, really showed that he can be an alpha in that offense. So there's a statistic that I really like. It's a, an efficiency statistic. It's called yards per route run. Now, when we see that rookie wide receivers spike in yards per route run, that's a really strong signal that no matter the volume that they did get, they were doing really, really well with that volume. Now, he spiked really, really highly in that category, fairly elite. I think he's somebody that's low enough on in, you know, on the fantasy radar that you could probably get him for maybe a second. If, you know, maybe a second round rookie pick this year in your dynasty, in your dynasty leagues, cast the net, see what comes back, go try and buy Kadarius Tony. As for players that I'm kind of out on right now, I don't have anybody that I've really pegged as somebody that I'm super out on, but if I had to pick somebody right now, I would probably say I'm looking to get out of I, I, I would ship off Devontae Adams for the, the mm. biggest haul that I can get. He's going to a situation right now that's that I'm not sure he's going to succeed in. I think, like I said, I think he's an alpha wide receiver. I'm excited to see what he does, but the value and the hype of him right now, go get yourself a couple first round picks, stack your team. He's an aging wide receiver that just got a huge contract. We don't know what that situation is going to look like. I'm throwing him on the trade block. I'm going to see what I can get back for him. I think it's a really, really big time right now in the offseason. I think you could probably get a couple picks for him. As everybody knows, we are talking to freelance dynasty fantasy football content creator, Jesse Reeves. Before we let you go, Jesse, uh, last question for us. Uh, and uh, we definitely want to know, we want the fans to, to find you on social media. So we want you to give them that. When you look at really so far this offseason, uh, who are the big winners and who are the big losers so far this offseason? The big winners, you know, someone that we talked about. I mean, if we're looking at, you know, the Chargers, I think they made absolutely. And I'm not I'm trying not to be a homer. OK, but I, I'm, I'm excited. But I think that they really, really stepped up um, in, in being aggressive. They went and got Khalil Mack. They did so much, so much for that defense. And they already have an, an, an incredible offense. So I think that's an absolute winner. Denver Broncos as well. I mean, they're just it's it's hard to get to get a guy like Russell Wilson and not look at them as absolute winners, right? Um, a team that I think is is kind of losing right now, and I don't even know if, if you call it losing, but I mean, Seattle, them, you know, netting a couple firsts for, for Russell Wilson, but giving up, on, you know, that type of player and then leaving your franchise with Drew Locke. I think in a couple of years, we might look at it a little bit different. Maybe they're in a full rebuild mode, but looking at guys that, you know, when you have a, a team that has Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and you don't ever really want to count out Pete Carroll for as bad as he can be sometimes with leading into the rushing attack. But I mean, I don't think it was necessarily time for them to do a full rebuild and shipping off your, your, your franchise like that. I think that could be considered a losing move. How about the Cowboys, too? That's a losing move, too. Huh? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Well, I mean, I thought they've been losing since they, they let Ezekiel Elliott sign that contract, man. That kind of really <laughs> – and, and then trading away Amari Cooper as well. I love CeeDee Lamb. I have extremely high hopes for him, and I think he can be a very, very solid wide receiver one. But you can't convince me that an offense with Dak Prescott and, and CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper is not as good as a wide receiver with Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb. And then, of course – Ezekiel Elliott back there so I will I will see that argument and I will say they are absolutely losing especially I mean Lyle Collins released today they're you know uh Randy Gregory going to Denver not re-signing there it's just 
it's it, it feels like they're they're absolutely losing right now.